This is the All Anal, All Anal, All Anal, All Anal Podcast with your host, Sebastian Star. Sebastian Star. With your host, Sebastian Star. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the All Anal Podcast. I'm your host, Sebastian Star, and today it is long overdue, long awaited. I know it's been a minute. I've been busy. I've been keeping up with like wedding stuff, wedding planning, wedding rehearsing, all that good stuff. But I'm here to talk about the new single by my man's The Weeknd, Take My Breath. And in addition to that, I have a lot of big XO announcements coming up that I can't wait to dive into and talk about. But let's get into these lyrics. I want to talk about the lyrics and I want to talk about the music video. Now, before I dive into either or, I will say that in the anticipation of this new single, his new era... We closed off the After Hours era with the Super Bowl halftime show back in February. It was a beautiful performance. And since then, he's been kind of, you know, shifting into this new chapter. You know, as EXO fans, we consider each album, each era to be a chapter. You know, starting from the very beginning with Trilogy. You know, even before that with the mixtapes, the original lineup. Which, by the way, he has released the original mixes of all of his mixtapes on streaming services for their 10-year anniversary. So big kudos to that. He released House of Balloons earlier this year, and he just released Thursday like two days ago, and the shit is exciting, I must say. It's very, very exciting. So, you know, next up is Echoes of Silence, which will probably be, you know, November-ish of this year because that's when it came out, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm getting a little off topic, I apologize, but like I said, we finished off with the After Hours era back in February, and between then and now, he's still performing After Hours songs, but he's no longer in that After Hours character with the busted up face, bandages, blood speckled nose and eyes and lips, the big red blazer, you know, those devilish sunglasses, all of that has been laid to rest for the most part. And now we're shifting into his new character for his new era. His last award show that he was on, he was like, thank you all for the love and the support. And, you know, it's finally time to say goodbye to the the after hours era. But the dawn is coming. And that entire phrase has been pushed and plastered all across the EXO fan pages. The fan base is going crazy about it. So we're, we're under the impression that this new era is going to be around that phrase. He wouldn't have said that just to, you know, sound cute. You know what I'm saying? Now, me personally, I have a theory. In Trilogy, the the bonus tracks that came with each individual mixtape that, you know, connected all of them together in the Trilogy album, he has a song called Till Dawn, a.k.a. Here Comes the Sun. And I feel like a lot of people don't remember that because it was a bonus track on the Trilogy But I feel like it's not going to be incorporated in that entirely, but I just think it's a little ironic. So that's just me brainstorming, doing what crazy EXO fans do, and that's making these assumptions and conspiracy theories. But I digress. So we have the new single, Take My Breath, and I'm going to be honest with you. I heard the snippet. They used the snippet in the Olympic campaign, and I wasn't crazy about it. I'm not too much of the poppy Fan, you know, I loved Starboy, but Starboy had a lot of pop in it. And it was cool for that era. After Hours also had a lot of really poppy stuff in it, but it was only here and there. It wasn't completely consumed in pop. You know what I'm saying? You had the dark and eerie stuff. You had the disco stuff. You had the hardcore R&B stuff. You had the hardcore hip hop stuff. You had a little bit of everything in the After Hours era. And that's why I love it so much. But I'm un- But I'm being told that this new era is strictly like party music, it's strictly like pop music. So I'm not saying it's going to be necessarily a repetition of Starboy, because even though Starboy was great, it was great for the era, for the time. And he had hits on top of hits, banger after banger on Starboy. So it's not like it was a disappointment, but I feel like he's going to up it up a little bit. He's going to go next level. Now, when I finally did sit down and listen to Take My Breath from start to finish, I thought to myself immediately, this sounds like a Michael Jackson song. This does not sound like The Weeknd, Abel Tesfe. This sounds like Michael Jackson from the Jackson 5, from like, you know, that era of pop or techno kind of music from like the 
the late 80s, early 90s going. You know what I mean? It sounded like that. Which, that's fine, because it still sounded really, really good. It was just very, very different. And then, <laughs> the music video, when the music video dropped, I took my time to watch it, because again, I wasn't like crazy about the song, initially when I first heard it. But then I was like, fuck it, I'll just watch the music video. I watched the music video, <laughs> and I thought to myself, why the fuck is this video so goddamn kinky? Like, what is going on? What is happening? And then I'm on a fan page on Facebook and I posted in that fan page. I said, yo, why didn't nobody tell me that the Take My Breath video was so goddamn kinky? Like, what is going on? And then somebody commented underneath it, oh, that song is a very freaky song. And I'm like, freaky like how? Like, what do you mean? And then they basically gave me the rundown, the gist of what it's about. And now it's like one of my new favorite songs. (laughs) Because I wasn't paying attention. And this is why I do this. This is why I analyze song lyrics, music videos, artist evolutions, etc. Because I didn't care for it when I first heard it. I thought it sounded good. I liked the way it sounded, but I wasn't crazy about it. But then someone told me what the song was about. And then I went back and listened to it again. And I said, holy shit. This song... (laughs) This song is about a girl who likes to be choked while she's having sex. And I said, damn. Okay. And so I went back. I went back and I listened to it again. I said, you damn skippy. That is what this fucking song is about. And I was fucking flabbergasted. I just couldn't believe it. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive into the music video first. The music video has to be the greatest thing And when I say kinky, when I say kinky, I mean like kinky. Like this shit is like, because you know, when you think of kinky, you think of like Fifty Shades of Grey. You know what I'm saying? Which he did the whole Fifty Shades of Grey thing, the BDSM, the tying bitches up and strapping them with the, it's, that's for play. That's play play. I feel like that's childish kinks. I feel like that's you know, not the real deal, holy field type shit. This shit here gets wild very, very quickly. And I just can't believe it. So it starts off with the, when he announced the dawn is coming, he, he portrayed it as the sunrise over the city. You know what I'm saying? So the video starts off like that. It shows his silhouette walking into the sun or out of the sun You know, and he's just like marching along to the beat, not marching, like marching, but like he's keeping a steady tempo. And he, oh, by the way, I love the costume for this new character in this era. It is so sophisticated. He got the suave suits, the well-fitted, tapered, you know, oh my God, he just looks so delectable. (laughs) He looks like a fucking bouquet of edible arrangements. He looks fucking delicious. Like it looks amazing. And he looks so good. He didn't grow his beard out. It's all full and thick and healthy. He got Afro. It just, he just looks, he looks amazing. Okay. He looks fucking amazing. <laughs> he looks good. Now, so he's marching along. He's in this underground tunnel that leads into a nightclub. It's a lot of lights and people dancing to like crazy techno shit. And there's this girl posted up in the corner, just kind of watching, peeping. He's peeping her. She's peeping him. And the girl is beautiful, by the way. I mean, absolutely beautiful. Like She's a very gorgeous girl. And he walks up to her. She's like seducing him with the little dances. And she's, you know, straddling him and stroking his beard. And he's he's feeling it. And then out of nowhere, she pulls out a gas mask and inhales it like it's a fucking bong or some shit. Like she's just huffing and puffing on that motherfucker. And she puts it up against his face. And then they get the dancing on the dance floor. And it's kind of like, it's very interesting how he introduces this weird kinky, you know, side of himself. I'm not going to say socks. He's always been a freak. You know what I'm saying? But it's interesting how he kind of plays into it. So the girl kind of uses that gas mask to kind of lure him to the back of the club to like this little VIP section that's in an underground tunnel or some shit. I don't know. And they're going back and forth with the gas mask, just breathing into it. There's other people there doing the same thing. And it's like they're smoking it almost, It's which is weird because it's called take my breath. But they're inhaling and exhaling and inhaling and exhaling. And they're just going back and forth. And there's, there's a whole bunch of shit. Like, it's like a drug. It's like they're smoking something that's like a drug kind of sort of. 
And it's crazy, but it's like they're getting high off of each other's, like they're in each other's breaths. Like they're inhaling each other's breaths. <laughs> and then this is where she gets kinky arm. She takes her hair, which is like braided into a rope and wraps it around his neck, right? And she's really like luring him into her seduction. And then she kicks him against the wall and starts choking him. I mean choking, like she got this nigga in a noose pulling that bitch up and he's like on his knees like, oh my God, I can't breathe. And then she starts dragging him <laughs> and then she starts dragging him across the floor. This nigga is flailing, wailing, kicking. He'd probably be screaming if he could fucking breathe. And I, <laughs> and it just keeps going and, and it's like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> She is trying to kill him. And I don't know what this nigga's fascination is with dying in his music videos. He doesn't die in this video. He does get knocked unconscious, though. Like, she she chokes the life out of him. And she walks away like she just committed murder. And he wakes up in the middle of the dance floor in the nightclub, like, gasping for air because he can't fucking breathe. And I'm just like, bro, what the hell did I just watch? I don't know what this nigga's obsession is with dying in his music videos. But if you take that, if he would have died, which he basically did if he wasn't revived by his own support system in his lungs, I don't fucking know. But you have this, you have the false alarm video where he does that bank robbery and gets into that car accident. And then the, the hostage steals the last of the money and then he shoots himself in the, in the head. You got the tell your friends where he's burying himself in the desert alive. You have the Starboy video where he suffocates himself and then reemerges as the new era version of himself. You got the Save Your Tears video where he doesn't like shoot himself, but he shoots himself, you know, with the gun. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what this nigga is. I, somebody needs to check on him because <laughs> he is obsessed with killing himself or putting himself in these near death experiences. In a lot of his music videos. And for some reason, he loves to be spattered in blood. Because there's a lot of videos like that, too. But I digress. The video is kinky as hell. I was just like, bro, what in the fuck did I just watch? And I think when I watched the video, it made me like the song even more. And I don't know what that says about me. I don't want to, like, choke this nigga out or anything like that. Like, I don't want to kill him. I damn sure don't want to wrap a rope around his neck. It wasn't a rope, but it was like her hair was braided, and, you know, and the braid was the rope, and she wrapped that around his neck and kicked the shit out of him to the point where he flew across the tunnel and slammed against the wall, and she's like, you know, when you see uh, Kill Bill Volume 1 and Uma Thurman is fighting Go-Go in the, in the bar with uh, Lucy Liu's character watching and she got that ball on a chain and she wraps the chain around Uma Thurman's neck and slams her to the ground. That's exactly what the fuck she did. <laughs> that is exactly what the fuck she did to the weekend in this music video. She slammed this nigga to the ground and started dragging him with her hair. And he's literally like struggling to. And it's just like, bro, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> like, I don't get it. I don't know. But that's the video in a nutshell. I looked a lot of things out. It's a lot of flashing lights. It's a lot of flickering things moving very quickly. So please, if you have epilepsy, watch with caution because they didn't put no kind of warning, no flash warning in front of the video. But it's a lot of that going on. It's a lot of that going on. And so just be mindful of that if you decide to go back and watch it. But the shit is crazy. <laughs> I don't know what his obsession is with dying in his music videos, but this is what the nigga likes to do. And maybe he's really into that shit. Maybe he really does like to be choked out while he's having sex. Or maybe he likes to choke people. I don't know, but that's what the song is about. We're about to dive into these lyrics real quick. You are now tuned into the All In A Podcast with Sebastian Stone. So these song lyrics really had me like reconsidering my entire perspective of the song. Again, the music video made me like the song, but then when I really went back to listen 
to what he was saying, I was like, bro, this nigga is really talking about choking out. And the good thing, the great thing about it is he's not suggesting it like it's his idea. He's saying it from the perspective. She came to me and said, hey, let's try doing this tonight. Like that's how he presented it. So first verse it comes in with that groovy, like, it comes in like that with the guitar. <laughs> the guitar comes in like that, and it, it just keeps that going. It got a little bit of the synthesizers in there, the little high pitch, you know, quick of the keyboards, you know, clickety clacks. And he, he, he comes in right when the beat drops, and then it comes right back in with the grooviness. You know, it's very, it's very groovy. It's very upbeat. It's very fast paced, but it's not too quick, you know, that you miss it. It's, but it's quick enough to get a nice little bump going. So he comes in and this is, this is so, this is so great. (laughs) I saw the fire in your eyes. I saw the fire. When I look into your eyes, you tell me things you want to try. I know temptation is the devil in disguise. You risk it all to feel alive you're offering yourself to me like sacrifice. You say you do this all the time. Tell me you love me if I bring you to the light. Hold on, dude. <laughs> bar for bar. We going line for line. I saw the fire in your eyes. I saw the fire when I look into your eyes. I can see that urge, that underlying sensation, temptation, you know, exploration, whatever. I can feel it. I can sense it. I can see it when I look at you, right? You tell me things. You tell me things you want to try. I know temptation is the devil in disguise. You're telling me something that's very, very risque. You know, it's very, very different than what I'm used to. I've never done this before. I've never tried this before. I don't experiment like this. And it's tempting. The offer is very tempting. It's a very lucrative offer, but it's also very, very risky because anything can go wrong. Something can happen that we're not prepared for and things can escalate quicker than we anticipated they could. And Anything can happen. It, it's, it's a chance that I'm probably willing to take if the circumstances of the consequence wasn't so high, right? And that comes up later, so be mindful of that. You risk it all to feel alive. You're offering yourself to me like sacrifice. You're offering yourself to me. You came to me with this ideology. You came to me with this crazy ass idea. You came to me with this fantasy that you want to play out and you're laying yourself out to be taken advantage of completely in the worst way possible. Now, he doesn't say exactly what she wants him to do, but you just know that it's something like, I don't want to say outrageous, but dangerous is a good way to put it. And in the last line in the first verse, You said you do this all the time. Tell me you love me if I bring you to the light. Now, that is a hint. That's a tiny little sprinkle of salt of what the fuck she's hinting at, quote unquote. So you say you do this all the time. Tell me you love me if I bring you to the light. That sounds like you want me to kill you. That sounds like you want me to kill you. And I don't know how I feel about that. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. We have to talk about this more in detail. We can't just let it flow, you know? So the pre-chorus, it's like a dream what she feels with me. She loves to be on the edge. Her fantasy is okay with me. Then suddenly baby says, and then it falls into the chorus. Take my breath away and make it last forever. Do it now or never. Take my breath away. Nobody does it better. Oh, God. Lord, she said, take my breath away and make it last forever. Now, I didn't put two and two together until someone told me, you know, 
that this is what was going on. And I kind of hate myself for not figuring it out sooner. I really do. And I should have just, I shouldn't have just given him the benefit of the doubt. Like you never disappoint me. (laughs) You never disappoint. When you put out a banger, it's a banger. So I should have just listened to it as soon as it came out. But I was, I was hesitant because I wasn't sure what to expect. And I think another big thing is that I love the After Hours era so much. Everything about it was perfect to me. It was amazing. It was beautiful. It was sensual. It was intoxicating. It was addicting. I'm I'm still in love with it. I'm still in love with the After Hours era. I haven't gotten over it yet. Like, I'm crazy about it. It's the best era that he's done so far. So I'm thinking to myself... After Hours is over and done with. I can go back and relive it as much as I want, watch the videos, the performances, you know. I got paraphernalia dedicated to it, all of that shit. How are you going to top such greatness? How are you going to top such a monumental album, era, chapter? How are you going to beat this? What could be better than the After Hours era? And in my mind, I'm like, nothing. This is the greatest it can get. So I was very skeptical because I wasn't ready to let go of the After Hours era. But then I heard it. I was like, okay, that sounds good. I'm not crazy about it, though. Like, I didn't feel the same way I did when I heard Heartless for the first time. When I heard Heartless for the first time, I was like, dude, this is fucking amazing. So I wasn't blown away. But look, (laughs) it's the lyricism. And it's always been his lyricism. Even when the song, I think, is just good, not great or amazing or fantastic, even when the song is just good, it's always the lyricism that reels me in every single time. And he never fails. It never fails. He does not write bad lyrics. He does not sing out bullshit. Bullshit never flies out of this man's mouth. So I should have taken the time to listen to the song lyrically versus just paying attention to the music because the music is going to change, it's going to evolve, it's going to grow as he grows, it's going to fluctuate as he fluctuates, it's going to shift as he shifts. That comes with an artist who's been in the game for a long period of time. They experiment with sound that's healthy, that's perfectly fine, And in most cases, it works out very well because you hear your favorite artist doing something different and then you're exposed to something different. And now your interests have broadened and you find more artists that sound like that. And next thing you know, you're listening to new music. So there isn't anything wrong with the shift in music. I just didn't want the After Hours era to be over with. I didn't want to let go of it. But this song, this song is pretty damn great. It's pretty fucking amazing. Let's move on to verse number two, because this is when shit gets crazy. So, want me to hold on to you tight. He said, want me to hold on to you tight. You pull me closer, feel the heat between your thighs. You're way too young to end your life. Girl, I don't want to be the one who pays the price. So you're telling me, to hold on tighter, to squeeze harder, to be more intimate, more passionate. You're getting, you're getting off on this shit. You're the heat, the eroticism. That's not even a real word, but I don't give a damn. You're getting off on what I'm doing to you. You're enjoying yourself. You love it so much. You don't want me to stop, but this is that fine line of dangerous Because you want me to keep going. You want me to squeeze tighter. You want me to hold on tighter. If I go any tighter, you're probably going to pass the fuck out or die. And how the hell are we going to explain this to people? Like, what the fuck were you two doing? And I don't want that problem. Okay? I don't mind doing what you're asking me to do. But I don't want to kill you. Right? I don't want to kill you over a kink, right? I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to deal. Who the fuck wants that problem? Nobody. And then the pre-chorus and the chorus repeats again and really just repeats until the song ends pretty much. Um, 
of course, Belly also co-wrote this song with him. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm not surprised. This song, oh my goodness gracious. Let me just read the chorus one more time because it, it's a little bit longer at the end. So he says, take my breath away, make it last forever. Do it now or never. Take my breath away. Nobody does it better. Bring me close to heaven. That's what, that's what it says. <laughs> Bring me close to heaven. Get me there. I want to be right there. I want to be right on the edge of life and death because that's where my ecstasy is. That's where my G spot is. That's what's going to make me finish harder than I've ever finished before. That's what's going to get me. Oh my God. <laughs> that's what's going to get me to climax harder than I've ever climaxed before in my life. I need you to get me to the brim of death. I want to see the gates of hell or the bridge to heaven. I want to see one of the two. And then that's when you can let go. That's when you can stop right there. But I don't want nothing if it's not that. If it's not that, I don't want it. If you're not damn near trying to kill me, I don't want it. And that's, oh my God. <laughs> my man said, bring me close to heaven. Now, I'm tripping because I thought he said nobody does it better when we're both together. No, he said nobody does it better. Bring me close to heaven. Take my breath. Sweet Jesus, that, look, let's just put it in perspectives for you. Long story short, I'm looking forward to the new era, okay? I'm looking forward to the dawn. The dawn is upon us. He keeps saying that. He keeps hinting at it. There's so many articles about the inspiration behind this new album, where most of the, the music comes from, most of the lyrics come from, how it's all going, the overall feel of it. But again, his character's costume is this very suave, sophisticated gentleman who wears, you know, tailor-made suits, you know, oversized coats, boots, and, and, and he just looks fucking delectable. Like, he just looks like a million bucks. The, the man looks, he's sharp. He's, Jesus Christ, I couldn't pick out a better outfit myself if I wanted to. But just, it, 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 it uh, and I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. I'm excited. I'm ecstatic. I really can't wait to see what this next album is talking about. And I'm just looking forward to how it all plays out. And it shows me for putting any kind of, you know, skepticism into my favorite artists because not once has any of my favorite artists ever let me down when it comes to making a new project. Not The Weeknd, not Kid Cudi, not Childish Gambino, nobody. Any of my favorite artists, when they come up with new music, it's always great, but I'm always very skeptical, usually because... Whatever album came before it, I loved it so much that I'm like, how are you going to top this? What's better than this right here? And I need to learn to stop doing that, to stop being so skeptical when it comes to my favorite artists, because they're not going to disappoint. They, they never do. They haven't. And I'm not convinced that they will anytime soon. You know what I'm saying? And I just, it, it serves me right for being doubtful. And that's, that's, that's on me. That's, that's my fault. Now, as we speak on new music, Belly, who co-wrote the song with him, no surprise there, has his new album. Finally, we have a release date for See You Next Wednesday, August 27th. I cannot wait for that album to come out. And I'm looking forward to it because Belly has been on hiatus for like two, three years now. So I'm definitely looking forward to his next album coming out. I'm looking forward to all of his singles. He has a shit ton of features and it's just going to be great. I already know it's going to be great. Still looking out for the release date for The weekend's new album, but I will keep you posted, updated as best as I can. I know I've been slacking-lacking in the past couple of weeks, but I am devoted to doing this. 
on a regular basis. I'm trying to be as consistent as possible because consistency is equivalent to greatness. No one will know that I'm here if I don't have anything to give you. So I'm trying to give you as much as I can. And I'm going to keep doing that until I can't do it no more. So thank you so much for tuning in, for sticking around, for listening. I really, really do appreciate it. And until next time, I will speak to you all later. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the All Anal, All Anal, All Anal podcast with your host, Sebastian Starr.